Awesome. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody for uh, tuning in. This is Dan Kane from uh, BibleDude.net, and I'm with uh, Seth Barnes, the Executive Director from Adventures with Missions. Uh, URL will be posted below in the, in the post here. Um, here to talk to Seth. Welcome, first of all. Uh, how are you doing today, man? I'm doing good, Dan. This is my first time doing a uh, kind of a blog that has video attached to it, and uh, I can just see where this technology is going. We'll all have little news shows to, to put uh, on our blogs in the future. Yeah, it's pretty cool, man. Uh, having a lot of fun with it. So, uh, so Seth, you've been down to uh, to Haiti recently, uh, shortly after the earthquake and stuff. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about why you went and uh, and what you saw while you were down there? Yes, uh, you know Haiti is is always been a place where missionaries have gone, and uh, it's the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere, and has lots of need, and it's only a two hour flight from the mainland. Right. But um, when this earthquake came along, it is arguably the greatest humanitarian catastrophe of our time, at least in, in this hemisphere, and and so. It was a tremendous opportunity to go and to be a part of God's plan to uh, resurrect that country. And uh, on top of that, we've got a lot of work that we've been doing in Haiti. And we have a base right across the border in the Dominican Republic. And we're, we're in there just a couple of days after uh, the earthquake hit with, with aid. And uh, quickly, I, I kind of went to prayer with it and knew that God wanted not only to do something that would amaze the nations, uh, but also that he wanted us to be a part of it. That's great. Well, what kind of stuff did you see? I've, I've read some of the posts that you've written since you've been back, and uh, it seems like it seems like God's really moving down there. Right? Can you tell me a little bit about the, what the experience has been like for you? Sure. We went across the border from the Dominican Republic and expected to see all that we, in fact, saw. I mean, it was devastation everywhere, uh, just couldn't believe the the amazing uh, power of, of an earthquake in 45 seconds to devastate so many lives. Uh, and the human scale of the tragedy was immediately perceptible as we talked to people. And, and later we saw more of the scope of the, of the disaster. But what was um, completely taking us by surprise at the time was the hope that we saw, the fact that God was moving in the midst of the chaos, that God had actually... Uh, intervened in some powerful ways in people's lives uh, with angelic visitation, saving them from certain disaster, as well as in the uh, response of the entire nation in suspending their uh, Mardi Gras celebrations and instead calling three days of prayer and fasting. And we came in on the very first day of that event, and uh, it was unlike anything I've ever seen in all my years of missions. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, no... Every, everybody really knows that the initial support uh, right after the earthquake has really been pretty overwhelming. Uh, probably one of the biggest uh, calls to action that, I, that I've seen in a long time with anything. Uh, the proximity and stuff like that probably had a lot to do with it. Um, but since then, seems, seem, uh, things seem to have settled down quite a bit. Uh, would you agree that help is still needed down there? And what can people do uh, to help in the rebuilding or, or even the healing process? Oh, it's um, it's overwhelming, Dan. I mean, it, right now the rainy season is beginning, and none of the communities that need to be rebuilt have been uh, even started. And so people are sitting there, and there aren't nearly the tents that are needed. Uh, so many of them are sitting there just at, at best under sheets, being drenched by the rains. And uh, it's, it's sheer misery. I just saw a report on the AP that eight people died maybe yesterday or the day before. Um, and, and so it, it's only going to get worse as the beginning of the rainy season. Yeah, things are, are uh, still chaotic and, uh, and getting worse, and, and disease will probably follow on that. Uh, the real interesting thing, though, is that in, in the midst of all of this, uh, the people are still responding by turning to God. And, and that's where uh, I think that we as Americans can intervene and uh, and really not only bring hope, but ourselves be greatly touched by it. Everybody that we sent there has uh, come back amazed by the response of the people. They're, they're not responding with despair, but they're responding by turning to God with hope. And uh, it's completely counterintuitive. It, it's a supernatural thing that God's doing. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, you know, and a lot of people, I'm sure, would love to go down there. Uh, but a lot of people, too, would also say that, yeah, hey, there's no way I can get down there. 
Uh, what are some practical ways that you think that uh, that people might be able to get involved and uh, help out just even even from home? Yeah, there's uh, three main things that we advocate that you do. First of all, you need to pray about going. Just don't assume that it's going to be too costly. Right. Uh, even if you yourself don't have the resources. If God wants you to go, it'll make it a poss- it'll make He'll make it possible. And we, as a short-term mission agency, have uh, stepped out in faith and said, you know, although uh, the typical cost for this sort of a trip uh, for a week or so might be between seven and, and nine hundred dollars, we said, well, we'll do that. We'll do it for half of that, just trusting that God will make it possible. And so, uh, for really the cost of what for many people would be uh, a, a domestic trip, less than four hundred dollars, you can go and you can make a difference. You do have to get your airfare, but uh, Spirit Airlines and, and uh, uh, agencies like uh, like that make it possible. Um, I, I think that. Uh, if you can't go, though, there's there's something you can practically do right now besides giving money, which would be a second thing. A third thing would be to engage in what I call a, a church-to-church partnership. And you can click on our link at adventures.org and see how to engage with it. Everybody has a, a church, and everybody can engage that church in just praying for uh, a sister church over in Haiti. And in doing that, kind of, uh, you know, you you engage in, in uh, a bit of their pain, but also uh, uh, some of their hope that they have as they mm. go through the thing and depend on God. Mm. That's awesome, dude. Uh, you know, I really dig this stuff, and I, I think that's something that a lot of people can get a hold of. So what's uh, what's coming up next for Seth Barnes? What you what you got that you're working on and playing well, for right now? Well, you know, I... Just in the theme of Haiti, I, I personally am uh, greatly, I was greatly moved by what I saw, uh, moved by uh, the individuals who um, are trusting in God in, in ways that I uh, long to trust in him. And, and I want to continue to be, you know, impacted by their experience. And so I personally have committed to go back with a group of leaders in May. Uh, I'll be going back to uh, continue to tell the story of what God's doing there. And um, I, it's not something that I would choose to do. I don't, you know, love the place per se, but I do love what God's doing there. And I am just uh, challenged by uh, the way in which people who have so little can uh, look at a big God and say, uh, though you slay me, yet will I love you. So that's that's a big thing for me. Um, our ministry is continuing to grow at a, at a rate that it kind of astounds me sometime and not just the response to Haiti, but uh, with or, um, with a couple of ministries we've got, like the World Race, where uh, young people go around the world for an entire year, and uh, you have to be in your 20s. You go in a in a team, you uh, go to 11 countries, and uh, engage in a variety of ministries. It's really kind of an initiation process, and that ministry is growing at about 100 percent a year right now. So that wow. that's got me, uh, you know. Uh, constantly challenged as well. Uh, there's there's a lot of things. God is on the move in the world, and I just love to kind of surf his wave and be a part of what he's doing. Awesome, dude, man. Well, hey, I appreciate the time, and uh, uh, just a little wild card question here for you, too. Uh, as we record this right now, uh, we're in the midst of uh, March Madness. Uh, you got a, got a favorite basketball team you're rooting for right now in the tournament? Make any predictions? Well, I- yeah, I grew up a Missouri Tiger fan, so I always hated the Jayhawks. I was glad to see them out of there, although <laughs> Tigers are out, too. Uh, my daughter, interestingly, uh, Talia, is, is a big fan of the thing, set up a big uh, pool at our at, at the office. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm probably about fifth or sixth out of, I don't know, 25 people right now. Wow. Uh, but, uh, yeah, she, she did the chart for me. I have not a clue who's going <laughs> to win that thing. It is madness. Awesome. Cool. Thanks, man. Well, I appreciate it. And uh, like I said, it's uh, ventures.org, and uh, I know your blog, too, is at uh, southbarns.com. Is that correct? That's correct. Awesome. Yeah, it's adventures with a plural. So uh, adventures.org will get you there. And from there, you can click on a link to Haiti, and uh, it'll show you how to get involved either through going, praying, or giving. Awesome. Well, uh, thanks for the great work that you do, man, and thanks for the time uh, to come talk to the Bible Dude followers here, and uh, look forward to keeping up more with uh, what you got going on, man. Appreciate it. It's a pleasure talking to you, Dan. Take care. Thank you.